ena mana, ena reo, ena waka, tena koutou. Ko Duquesa Blackburn Hütner, ko tu ingua, ko tu Head of Life Cycle Management, aho. Nei rā te mihi, tena koutou, tena koutou, tena koutou, katoa. Ko te wai, te ora nā, mea katoa, which means water is the life giver of all things. Very appropriate. Welcome, I'm Duquesa Blackburn Hutna coming to you from Auckland, New Zealand. Your next stop in our 24 hour journey around the world of water. So I head up life cycle management for Healthy Waters at Auckland Council. Healthy Waters is the largest stormwater utility in the Southern Hemisphere and being a unitary authority, we're responsible for water quality outcomes, flood management, as well as the stormwater network and conveyance system. Auckland is a fast growing city surrounded by coastlines and harbours and prides itself in water sports and recreation. So water is very much at the heart of all of our communities. Some of our big challenges here are improving the water quality in our streams and also our harbours, enabling growth and enabling that in the right places, meeting the future water needs of our populations and also adapting to the changing water future as climate change and sea level rise continue to escalate. So we're already seeing more intense rain events, flooding, as well as summer droughts, and we're actually currently in a drought right now, even so we're just coming into spring, not an ideal situation to be in, and all of which are putting more pressure on our catchments, our coastlines, and also our communities. So our strategic direction is future-proof waters for a resilient, water-sensitive community. And that is underpinned by three strategic responses. First of all, that's empowered communities, which is putting our people and communities at the heart of everything that we do, as well as making them part of our solutions. Healthy environments, which acknowledges our role as an influential steward of environmental and public health outcomes and thirdly, resilient systems, which addresses the challenges of preparing our systems and our communities for more extreme events, such as the flooding, the coastal inundation, droughts, and consequential erosion. To achieve our strategic direction, we need to be innovative and we need to continue to try new things all of the time. We need to be smarter and we need to do more with less particularly in the harsh financial situation that we now find ourselves in as everybody else around the world with COVID. So we also acknowledge that we can't do it alone. So we've partnered not only with our communities, but also with innovative firms to deliver our outcomes and our strategic direction. Today, we're gonna share with you three of our key initiatives. First of all, we're gonna talk about our Safe Swim program and we're for which we've actually just won the Global Water Intelligence Award this, alongside our partners of McDonald's. Secondly, our fresh water management tool, which is part of our Safe Streams program. And thirdly, our National Green Infrastructure Certification. And Healthy Waters has partnered with the Water Environment Federation to bring this program to New Zealand. So we're gonna start with a small overview of Auckland. So please sit back and enjoy. Auckland is New Zealand's most populous region, with 1.7 million people residing within its boundaries, most living within Auckland city itself. The 5,000 square kilometres of land that makes up the region lies between the east and west coasts, bounded by three stunning harbours. 80% of this land is rural, with no major rivers running through the land, all streams start and finish within the region's boundaries. 233 rainwater catchment areas span the region and have an average size of 2,000 hectares. Many of these have high gradients, cover a small area and drain to the coast, resulting in localised stormwater flooding rather than large-scale events from rivers breaching their banks. Auckland is preparing for climate change and continues to improve practices, further reducing flood risk to its residents. I'm Holly Foreman, the Safe Swim Project Lead at Auckland Council in Healthy Waters. Safe Swim is Auckland Council's programme for managing public health risk. It's a website that gives you up-to-date information about water quality and safety hazards at over 100 spots across the Auckland region. 
It's the essential tool to help Aucklanders make informed decisions about when and where to swim. You can hear more now about Safe Swim in our promotional video, which we use to reach out to Aucklanders to remind everyone to check before you swim. Safe Swim is a tool that lets you go online really quickly and make some sensible decisions about going to the beach. It's a website, pick it up on your phone is the easiest way and it will literally find where you are. It'll, it'll take you to the, to the closest beaches. So it really is a, a, a quick process. Currently on the website, you'll see over 100 beaches in Auckland, but in fact, we're taking water quality samples at over 240. We have a team of full-time people. They travel around the region and monitor your beach. Now are our boots on the ground. We normally sample around 15 to 20 beaches a day. We also sample uh, freshwater sites such as rivers and lagoons and lakes. Uh, sometimes we go to very remote areas, so it can be raining, it can be sunny, cloudy, uh, very windy. So it doesn't matter what the weather is, we're out there sampling. So broadly speaking, we've got, we've got public health risk, you know, that, that's the risk of getting sick. Um, but the other key component is that we have a warning system for physical risks at the beach. Could be rips, could be dangerous rips in particular, could be um, jellyfish, it could be sharks. Surf Life Saving Northern Region, uh, a key program partner. If they have a team at the beach and their patrol captain decides that, that there's a risk that the public needs to know about, they'll put that up on the website. So within a matter of minutes of a hazard being identified, um, you can know about it. The lab process for these sorts of tests means we're having to wait something like 36 hours before we get a result back. You can imagine for, for all our beaches around the region, that's a lot of data. And that's why we have predictive models. So through our time monitoring a particular beach, we might have many, many years of data. And we take a look at that data and we understand when that beach is going high risk. And that's what you see on the Safe Swim website. What we really want to see is for Aucklanders to get out there and enjoy their beautiful beaches. And to do that as safely as possible. We're hoping for a nice summer where people can do exactly that. But we hope that in doing that, people remember to check the website, safeswim.org.nz. It's worth a five second check on Safe Swim. Kia ora. My name's Tom Joseph and I work with Mott McDonald based right here in Auckland. My role is head of our analytics platform, Moata. We've been a proud partner with Healthy Waters for nearly five years now, and in that time, we've been focused on collectively delivering some of the most innovative approaches to today's problems. Solving today's problems with today's technology. A lot of this work has culminated into the multi-award winning Safe Swim program that Nick and Holly just discussed. One of the most exciting things about Safe Swim is how foundational engineering expertise and modern digital technology combine to target environmental and social outcomes. Whilst the technology is advanced, with Moata managing more than 8 billion points a day from a suite of meteorological forecasts, wastewater overflows, pump stations, swells, tide, water temperature, and water quality, and then integrating this with hydraulic, hydrodynamic, and a statistical regression-based models all in real time, the result is elegantly simple and engages with all water users. To get all this work done, we needed more than technology. We needed a cross-functional team with a shared vision and a platform ecosystem to enable connected analytics and thinking. The team included a combination of some of the great Kiwi SMEs, such as Puhoi Stour, Translate Digital, and Weather Radar. It also included a collection of government and government and community organizations such as water care, surf life saving, regional health and services, and New Zealand Met Service. And of course, some international expertise from the likes of ourselves, Mott McDonald, and DHI. To facilitate this group, we need to develop a trust model so that we can protect each contributor's IP and adv but advance the group as a whole. The trust model was especially important to promote third-party innovation and integration. For example, when SMEs bring unique and powerful innovations to the ecosystem, such as weather prediction or water quality modeling, we need to make sure that these would not be bounded by historic IP restrictions and deter them from bringing the best of their innovations to the team. This is a great demonstrator of how we can connect an ecosystem that opens the opportunity 
for releasing greater value than the sum of its parts. We know the future is connected, and there is a, this is a real-life example of a federated digital twin which bridges the physical and virtual world from rain cloud to receiving environment, ultimately helping the communities we serve to make better informed decisions and improve outcomes for all. Kia ora koutou, ko Tom Stevens, I hope. Thanks very much, Holly, and the team at SafeSwim. That was an excellent presentation. I'm a principal water quality scientist here in Healthy Waters, and I'm going to talk to you about our slightly new and innovative and very shiny freshwater management tool, something we're quite proud of and which sets the agenda for New Zealand's future and water quality management. So in that, I'm going to explain what this thing is, I'm going to explain what it does, why we value it, and I'm going to explain that it actually works, and we're due to complete it pretty soon. I should give credit to the project sponsors and partners who've come along on this journey with us, including some compatriots for any Americans watching this video, so Paradigm Environmental are US-based, and they've got a lot of history and experience at continuous and process-based water quality modelling. Um, we've also got some excellent Kiwi firms who've been leading the future and really charting a future for Australasia. So that includes Morphin, that includes um, How Hydraulic Analysis Limited, the same with Perrin Ag, and equally Coru Environmental. Um, this model really is at its core um, there to address relatively simple questions. Is your water quality acceptable? If it's not, by how much? Who's responsible for that otherwise breaching various guidelines that either risks associated with recreational health or with your ecosystem functions? The most important part and the novelty in this model, though, I suspect, is really in its um, bridging the gap between regulation and operations. In this exercise, I should give you clarity about the scope. Um, this model is, in first part, a freshwater model for our rivers. It has the better part of 3,000 kilometres worth of stream in it that's being simulated continuously for a range of contaminant and hydrological processes affecting water quality at every kilometre or so. It simulates a range of contaminants, nutrients, heavy metals, fecal indicator bacteria, and sediments. Today's talk really is about linking in how we manage and better understand risks at the coast through knowledge of what's happening on the land and how much of those land-based activities are actually discharging contaminants to our coast. The last thing I really want to dwell on is that this thing is a decision support tool. We're quite innovative in Auckland Council. We're quite different from the rest of the country in that we're an amalgam of both regulatory and operational arms of government. We have to go about setting ambitious targets for future water quality that improve the water quality and fix various historic problems whilst also dealing with anticipated growth. Equally, we have to get ourselves there. We build the car and we also have to drive it. Here's how the model looks. It's based on two pieces of open source software that were developed by the US for the Clean Waters Act. So the US EPA developed the load simulation program in C++, LSPC, um, which is for many people watching a pretty foundational keystone piece of modeling architecture. It will simulate hydrology and contaminant behavior and it can do so over numerous differing surface types, rural and urban alike. It gives us an integrated outcome. It's also coupled to what's called sustain, which is our intervention model, our ability to otherwise use the process logic, the understanding of why contaminants and flow are being generated in the, in the myriad of ways that they are, to then start intervening in the landscape and to place a range of stormwater devices, whether gray or green, and equally source controls, whether we should be investing in changes in land use, changes in roofing materials, changing in roading materials. Combined, the two give us the opportunity not simply to frame what our water quality is or what it could be, but equally how we're gonna invest in that. It gives us the ability to optimize, to start changing the mix of devices, their locations, their size, and the disproportionate cost that might fall on developers, government, or landholders. Something unusual about New Zealand that I wanted to share quickly, briefly on camera is this notion that we value time series. Many other countries are fixated simply on managing a load and a steady state outcome, either a median concentration, some measure of risk. In New Zealand, courtesy of our national policy, which is the equivalent of the Clean Water Act or the EU's Water Framework Directive, we actually have to manage for both acute and chronic risks. We have to manage for a range of outcomes throughout time. We can't simply fixate on just one. And the way that we do that is also slightly novel. We assign grades to contaminants, an A, B, C, a D, if not an E. And just like at high school, the worse the grade, the worse the water quality. So we're giving people a platform on which to objectify water quality and through that to have a consistent definition of what it means. We do that and I've presented images up on screen to show you the difference. Here's a picture of um, a stream over in the Hawke's Bay, slightly east of us. It's a gravel bed stream, it shows you an A grade, 
water quality outcome for slime, so for nuisance algae at the very top, which is a key inhibitor of recreational value, and then a degrade stream down the bottom. All of that is driven by changes in hydrology and contaminants, all of which we can rate A to D through an understanding of what typically happens, median concentrations, and what otherwise happens under acute stressful conditions like the 95th percentile. Here's some of the output to show you that we've actually built this tool. We have the country's first region-wide continuous and process-based accounting framework, the means to understand water quality, not simply what it is, but why it is. Here's an output for the country's second largest harbour. Further south of the city of Auckland is the Manukau Harbour. It's a relatively impacted but otherwise highly valued waterway. It's a bed, a nursery for a great deal of marine life. It's also incredibly significant to um, treaty partners and New Zealand's quite unusual in that it has a treaty between indigenous peoples and later arrivals. In here, I'm just showing you outputs um, for the grading according to dissolved zinc. So the availability of zinc and the effect it's having on through toxicity on organisms in stream, both acute and chronic. We're able to assess both and determine the worst of the two and present it visually, as we have just like any other catchment framework. But this model also has five and a half thousand locations throughout the region of which there's about 770 in the Manico, where we're able to query those grades. We're able to look at an individual receiving point in the routing network and determine the source of those contaminants, which is shown in the pie chart, just showing that the overriding sources of zinc at that particular location, so this is to the whole harbour and the edge of streams, are distributed across things like open space and in large part roofing from the urban environments. The second part of the model that we're really building is that sustain component, which is this ability to act on the understanding of what is driving contaminant loss to then interfere, to either reduce the generation of contaminants or to intercept and treat them. So the foundation blocks of any stormwater management program anywhere in the world. We're going through an exercise now of taking sustain and building it into its next generation form, which allows us to do a wonderful thing called optimization. We can undertake that modeling at a range of locations in a range of different mixes and scale to understand what the cost and the benefit will be to contaminant concentrations. And that's both in the generation and the effects at reduced generation and in interception and treatment of contaminants. We do that for each of our five and a half thousand subcatchments for any one of the six major contaminants we simulate and generate a curve like this. This is our optimization curve showing thousands of possible mixes of mitigation choices in any one subcatchment, of which we have several thousand in Auckland, and from that the very best outcome, the best means of achieving reductions in a contaminant full cost, which is the orange bubble on the grey background. What we also do is this slight novelty, which is look not simply at a subcatchment, but go all the way down the reach network to harbours. You've heard from Holly previously that what's coming out at the coast is really a critical thing to governing recreational risk. Well, we are now in a position to start simulating what will happen at the coast if we intervene in different ways in differing subcatchments. And we can do that for E. coli, we can do that for sediment, we can do it for metals, we can do it for nutrients. Cool, and on the basis of that, I'm gonna hand over to my colleague Pete, who's gonna to talk to you not simply about the logic of understanding what you need to invest in and where, but how you need to manage that investment to ensure it performs. Kia ora koutou katoa, um, ko Peter Brooks, Taku Inga, ko Kote Storm Readiness Delivery Manager. Ho. Um, hi, Peter Brooks, I'm the Storm Readiness Delivery Manager here at Auckland Council. I'm following on from the great work Tom and um, Holly have done. If I'm going to introduce you to some of the work we've actually completed in the, in the, in the network. I'm going to talk to you about what we've done in developing the Green Infrastructure Training Programme to address a number of issues across the Auckland region and the biggest issue is training which I'll come to in more detail. So we've, we've actually done a lot of work with WSP um, to develop a, a training program that has been worked in conjunction with the Water Environmental Federation out of the United States. Um, this works actually to look at above water, uh, above ground and below ground levels, so grey and green infrastructure. Green infrastructure is what we use to um, improve water quality in urban environments. Um, as Tom's taking you through, we actually have a, a significant amount of urban streams within our, within our um, catchment. This, these historically have not been um, terribly environmentally friendly or focused on improving water quality. Their original focus was actually to deliver water from an urban environment into, into the coastal environment as quickly as possible. Um, that has caused obviously significant issues going forward. Um, we are in the process of retraining a number of our workforce to actually address these issues as quickly as possible. So 
the real sensitive problem is actually there's been a massive skill gap um, because we've actually not maintained this kind of a, um, infrastructure previously we actually needed a, a workforce that could understand what we were trying to achieve and not just in, install concrete channels and and the association um, the biggest issue is developers a lot of the assets that come over to Auckland Council are built by others and we vest them into our into our network and that basically means we take ownership of everything they've designed and built um, some of it is fit for purpose some of it isn't and what we've actually engaged to do is actually retrain these people to understand what green infrastructure is really about and what it means for the people of Auckland um, we're actually solving this skill, skills gap by actually developing and working with the Water Environmental Federation and their training program to give people a, a, a real vision of what the work and what they should be doing and how it should work for us and that is removing um, all the pollutants and details that Tom took you through. This infrastructure is um, throughout our, our networks and we've, we're working on the more key points and the, the existing stormwater network as we go and it's a systematic approach based on um, actual need and um, age of asset. Um, what it does is actually train people um, to have a certified certificate within green water itself so they actually understand what the impact of what they're doing is and how it actually manages what's done. It delivers a consistent approach in um, operations and maintenance um, starting from the design process including obviously safety and design through that. Um, it builds on that successful program out of the, the United States that's been running for over two years and had a significant number of professionals and um, site staff go through that work. It engages the community to actually care for their environment and actually understand the impact of um, the green infrastructure on how it improves their beaches. As Tom's already alluded, the Kiwis love their beaches and love to spend some time there. Um, they really don't want them polluted. And we've done a lot of work and engagement and actually understood the financial backing for this kind of work and actually has delivered some significant improvements across the region. Um, then now I'm going to take you through some examples. So this is a, a job we did in um, Browns Bay which is to the north of Auckland in a place called Taitia Reserve. This is the photo to the left is the original infrastructure that was in place which was a, a weir at the end of a piped network. Um, we removed the, the weir and actually created a fish ladder and natural um, flow rate for, for the fish to actually progress back up through the system. Um, further back up to within, this is just further up that, from that weir itself. We removed um, what basically was a, a boggy, marshy piece of grassland and installed a naturalised stream. Introducing all of that rock was hand placed um, by a team of guys. Um, root rods within the, within the stream bed itself to in, encourage invertebrates and small fish to actually grow and live and actually deal with the sediment load within the environment. Um, further back up again, the, the, the photo on the right is actually the, the original weir and infrastructure there to actually hold it back. This was used as an overland flow path when the pipe became overloaded. We modified that with a, 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 f a significant fish ladder, again naturalised with rock and planting to actually introduce oxygen and um, nutrients back into the water and therefore the, the invertebrates. And um, this is the what was the holding pond above. We've actually planted it out and created a wetland. Um, to do this, we removed significant amounts of sediment um, via a, a low dig pro a process. We actually pumped the water out and actually pushed it through sediment bags and removed up to about 70% of the water from, from the actual load itself and allowing us to plant and introduce a real environmentally friendly environment. And that's the end of us. Um, it's been absolutely wonderful um, to talk to you today. And yeah, have a, hope you've enjoyed the show. Well, I hope you found that informative. And um, we'd be happy to give you any more information of any of these projects or anything you're interested to find out from Healthy Waters. Just get in touch with me or any of the team um, or our partners um, if you want. So countdown and power up for VevTech Connect.